So today I'm going to talk about uh, God's call for revival. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is calling you. Come on, somebody turn to somebody and say, God is sending out a clarion call. It means a trumpet, a trumpeting call for revival. Let's say it one more time. God is sending out a clarion call, a trumpeting call for revival. You see, revival is for the saints. So it means revival is for me. And the uh, an awakening, an awakening is for the sinners. Sometimes we mix it up. But, but the revival is for the saints. The, the revival is for the church folks. Somebody shout and say, revival is for me. And an awakening is for who? The unbelievers. They need to awake to righteousness and stop sinning. And we, we hope that the folks up in the house ain't sinning in the church house. They are not sinning. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the revival is for the folks who are in the church from the pulpit on down to the door. Revival is to bring us back to God's high esteem, God's pent of us, God's pent of righteousness, God's standard of righteousness, God's standard of holiness. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Because at times we can become dull. You see, our cutting edge can become dull. Somebody say dull edge. When our uh, cutting edge is dull, we're going to have uh, the experience like they, those guys who were cutting the tree down on the Jordan and everything was while they were cutting. It was so difficult to do the work of God. Somebody say difficult. And without uh, our cutting edge being sharpened, you're going to feel dull. Somebody I said dull, dull physically, worn out, stressed out, and then it materializes in the realm of the spirit. Then you become dull spiritually. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are worshiping and praising and preaching, but nothing happening. And so somebody got to get their spirit man sharpened. Somebody say, uh huh. We get it sharpened by being revived, going back to the Bible, reading the Bible again, musing over God's word again, meditating God's word again. Somebody say, hallelujah. Having uh, the psalm is uh, David's spirit uh, where he mused, where he meditated on God's word, where he became one with God's word. Church, uh, God wants us to come back again to be one with his word. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Where you and his word, if they become one, touch yourself and say, God wants uh, his word and myself to be one. So you know, when, you, when you become one with God's word, you're not thinking out of his perimeters. Somebody say, uh-huh. You're thinking in line with his word. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yes. Somebody say, cause me to think in line with his word. Somebody say, revive, revive. Refresh. Renew. Dust off. To energize. To start over again. To get back to your first love. To weep again. To be concerned again about your own personal revival. Somebody said to be concerned again about your own personal drought. And say, God, there must be something different. And then you're quiet from your spirit and say, God, there must be more. Or oh, somebody say, hallelujah. Somebody say, God, there must be more. That's the cry of uh, your heart's revival. So everybody shout in the world, hear you, God. I can't hear you yet. Uh, somebody say, God, there must be more. There must be more than uh, my coming to the house of God using my cistern water. Think about that. It's expensive now. Uh, your dove soap is expensive now. Somebody say, uh-huh. Don't talk about your car gas to get here. Expensive now. I want to come here uh, uh, to get something happening in the realm of the spirit uh, in my life. Somebody say, yes. So here is the call. Somebody say, the call. There's a call not to your mind, but there's a call going out to your spirit. That somebody say God's calling you at the core of your spirit. Let me preach and say God is 
you to the core of your spirit and it says in Hosea 6 1 and 3 you can flip it up on the screen let's read it together he said come everybody said come that's a call from the God that's a call from the throne of God one more time somebody said come touch somebody said God's calling you he says come let us return to the Lord he has torn us to pieces but he will want to heal us he has injured us but he will want bind up our after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will restore us that we may live in his presence from the bottom up God wants us to live in his presence oh somebody say hallelujah because in his presence there is fullness of joy in his presence there is no sickness, no disease and infirmity somebody say in his presence there is no lack in his presence there is no insufficiency in his presence there is no stress or distress somebody say hallelujah in his, in his presence there is nothing lacking nothing broken and nothing missing, somebody better shout out and say that's the place where I want to be in his presence there is a glory of God 24 7 somebody shot and said that's the place where I want to be in his presence that's revival I can't hear the house up in here in his presence that's when we encounter somebody said encounter angels on a way somebody said I lift the hands up I say God I want to encounter angels on a way I can't hear the house of God up in here somebody say God I want to encounter angels on a whim. God, I want to be a carrier. Come on, say this. God, I want to be a carrier of your glory. I can't hear the house. Somebody say, God, I want to be a carrier of your glory. Well, when I move into a place, hallelujah, the glory comes with me. Ah, somebody say, hallelujah. When I, when I move into a place, problems are solved without my opening my mouth. Ah, somebody say, glory that's his presence somebody say uh -huh. and he has uh, torn us somebody said torn us uh, he said come let us return in America we have re we receive some tearing from God and even the church folks do not know when they receive a little tearing from God somebody say uh-huh on September 11th we receive a little tearing from God and the churches didn't know what to do the church folks did not know to network the church folks didn't know how to evangelize somebody said a little tearing and folks were coming in the church house this church house was open but prophetically and folks coming in during the day because we had it open for prayer before that happened because we had a prophet in this house who said I just feel something happening in the atmosphere open the church house at 12 to pray when we open it folks were coming in to pray and reaping and telling us the news about what's happening on cnn somebody said uh-huh he will tear us september 11 was just a little tearing somebody said tear uh, when, when, when the next tear comes to america i hope that we are ready hallelujah to network somebody said network i can't hear network Oh yeah, we got no network. Get up out your seat and give somebody your seat because you've heard a million messages and somebody who who, who got a tearing in their heart they came in. Woo! Look at them church folks. Somebody say, I hear you. And so he says, Come. Somebody say, Come. That's the verse that has in this clarion call. The Holy Spirit is calling us. It's calling men. It's calling women. It call, it's calling those who are sleeping. It's calling those who are in a, sl a slumber in sin and saying, Come, let us return to the Lord. Somebody say, I will return. One more time, that's your response. Somebody shout and say, I will return that's the response of the holy spirit for he has torn us to pieces what's and he has injured us sometimes god will injure you he will put a, a, a disruption in the relationship you know that's a, a dichotomy in the theology of god he will put a, a little disturbance in the relationship between god and the church somebody say uh -huh. so that you can get his attention that he can get your attention somebody say uh-huh 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some church folks uh, think that when God beating them, when things change uh, to a little drought, that God's killing you. God's not killing you. God want, is knocking and saying, cap, cap, cap. I want to get your attention. I wonder if God's getting your attention in America and in St. Thomas. Uh, somebody better shout something early. Somebody say, yes. God, you're getting my attention. Somebody respond and say, God, yes. Yes, he's injuring America. He is hurting America. He's putting a little disturbance in the relationship between America, the Virgin Islands, and himself for the, so that the church can get his attention. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. So he can get attention of the folks up in the church. And he's saying, stop crying, stop bawling. He said, get my, I want you to get my attention now. To return to me and I will return to you. I feel God in the house early. Somebody said, God is saying what? Return unto me and I will return unto God. Ah, somebody say, hallelujah. Touch somebody and say, we are to return. I can't hear the grumbling church. Some, somebody say, I, we are to return. Uh, not 99% but 100% uh, oh, somebody say hallelujah Mm. Uh, he, he will bind uh, he says when after he cause uh, something to happen uh, in, in, in it uh, we look at our economy the next page uh, we see uh, the hurt and the wound that's happening uh, he says we see massive layoffs uh, Factor is closing down in the Virgin Islands. We got the, th the threat by next week. Hovenza that produces some, some 500,000 barrels of oil per day. Closing its door for us. And just leaving the facility just to winnow and uh, be moss eaten. Somebody say, uh-huh. And a storage facility. Thousands out of their jobs. Knocking. Somebody say, that's God's knocking. Woo! Somebody say, Hallelujah. Then we see for the rate of foreclosure rates are going up. We see they have uh, um, um, thousands of ghost towns where doors are just creaking or they're padlocked with a combination lock. Have you seen it on TV? On CNN Fax and, and all those other guys. Then we have personal bankruptcy is on the increase. We have food lines are longer because folks no longer have the money to feed their families. Somebody said, uh-huh. We are seeing it in a distance. <laughs> I don't want to prophesy here. <laughs> but somebody said, just say, mm. number five, food banks are drying up because the lines are so long that they, could not, they, they, they no longer can, can supply all the folks who are out of food. Somebody said, uh-huh. Mm. The demand is high. Six, economic uncertainty throughout the world. Uh, war impending war okay in, in uh, islamic countries and uh, when we're gonna drop the bomb on iran when uh, they're saying we're gonna drop it anytime soon you see you understand me that's trouble <clears throat> mm, somebody say yes and then in number seven we can see what's happening in our economy that the government that has absorbed all the folks who needs a job now sending us home by the thousands somebody say uh-huh he will tear us somebody say he will tear us somebody say he will tear that's what that's what it says there he says come let us return to the lord back to the top come let us what return unto the lord and so all that's happening that i just listed in the economy locally and globally he's just knocking and say world and he's saying locally come let us return to the lord can we say it one more time come let us return to the Lord. So when you say everything going to the dogs, everything coming, going bad, he's saying, come. What God is saying, what? Come. Wait, what's happening in the economy? Those who are listening to us right now, what is he saying? Shout with me, church. He's saying, what? Come. He's saying, come back to God. Somebody say, hallelujah. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has what? Now you understand now. Now you understand what God's doing. He's doing a work upon us. Come, for he has torn Somebody say, he has torn us to pieces. One more time, say, he has. But he will heal us. Somebody say, there's a healing process coming. 
he has injured us but he will bind up our wounds once we return to him uh, hopping and hobbling rolling to him he will heal us and bind up our wounds somebody shout and say bind up the wounds of saint thomas bind up the wounds of america somebody say hallelujah and you're listening to us say bind up the wounds where you live somebody shout and say bind up the wounds Ooh, somebody say hallelujah and then he says revival is just around the corner he doesn't want to keep revival too far away from us that somebody say God he does not keep revival far away from us he says after two days once they come to your senses say, after what somebody touch him and say God can count yeah he said come let us return to God. Once you respond to that carrying call, he said, I'm going to give you two days just to see if you really mean it. If you're going to return within at least one day back to the same vomit you went to. I heard you when you call for come. When he called to come and he said, I changed my mind. I'm going to turn to God. And he said, I'm going to give you one day just to see if you straighten up yourself. I wonder, God is giving the church one day. Everybody shout one day. Touch somebody and say, God's good one day woo, to see when you call and say brother king brother king back there yeah one day he said call i'll give you two days and the one day just to see if you really mean it and on the two day the second day i'll show up i wonder somebody revelating with me it means some church folks call one day i uh, say okay i got gotcha. you i hear you somebody said god's god he said i hear you he gave you one day brother williams <laughs> And he's coming through the clouds, glory coming, angels coming, and before the 24 hours up, you messed up. Somebody said, mm. somebody said, help the church. Mm. No, no, no. We got another pre premise for revival. Mark it in your Bible. Another premise. So don't miss this one. Look in your contents, whatever. He said, I give you two days to make your mind up. One day to call. Somebody say. Help me preach, help me preach, don't forget it when you're stirring your pot this week. Somebody say what? One day to call and then two days to make your mind up and another one day to change your mind before revival comes. Woo! Somebody say what? Some revelation. I can't hear you. Somebody say watch the revelation and revival. Not somebody say it's easy. And it says with all the stuff that's happening, the injury that's happening that he's causing to put a disturbance in the, your relationship your personal relationship with god and the church's personal relationship with god and our nation's personal relationship with god and obama's white house relationship with god and and your own white house blue house black house yellow house red house in trinidad your own house relationship with god somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah he just put a disturbance in America's relationship. Caused things to just economy to go on a slide. And they think it's Obama. No, it's God injuring America and saying, America, awake. Hallelujah. Somebody say, uh -huh. come back to your roots. Come back. The folks who had those what they call brush arbor services. They, they had services in the open with trash and leaves and dirt. And they would have services. And something you can see more dust and then the folk because they had no nice carpet in the church no plus thing those are the folks who birth the economic progress in america somebody say aha uh -huh. and then the folks on wall street has the audacity to put their trust in the god money instill it in the god money in god we trust that's why things shaking in america somebody say hallelujah somebody say i'm understanding why we are in the predicament and the dilemma that we are in right now. Somebody say, aha. Uh -huh. And in the economic hammock that we are in, just swinging uh, to nowhere. Somebody say, I, I get it. Because God wants uh, to revive us in two days. God giving you three days. One to call. Put your fingers up. Come on. In, at home. Come on. One to call. One to see if you really made, meant to, made your mind up on the call. And the next day to receive. Somebody say next to receive. Put your hands together for that revelation. Come on. Woo! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody shall say, God, you're good. Mm. He says, after two days, he will revive us when we return. Uh -huh. And then he says, uh, he will revive us. Somebody say revive. 
and then he said, I will restore us. And so therefore, revive it means to restore everything in your life. Your natural life, your economic life, uh, your, your romantic life. You carry home a good revival to your mate. Everything up in the dark, wagging the tail in the right direction. I can't hear the house up in here. We haven't seen a romantic life and revival yet. Watch them now, come on. Oh yes, revival goes every place in your economy, your love life, your romantic life, your spiritual life, your physical life. Also, uh -huh. revival can be transported in in, in your where you shop. It, it can be transported and your clothes. You send them to the laundry and folks in there dropping on the power and repenting and don't know what's what's happening because your clothes just went to the laundry. Somebody said, uh huh. Revival in 1606 uh, moved from uh, America to China just by in the writing of a letter in China. I said, We are in revival. The person who got it, bam, went on the power of God and started a revival in China. Somebody say, Yes. Oh, somebody say, Hallelujah. Somebody say, Revival. <laughs> It means to restore uh, your relationship between God, your relationship between your fellow men and one another. Or oh, somebody say hallelujah. You want to see a breakout of love? Uh, up in your house, uh, this family, this church, uh, just get revived. Uh, or oh, somebody say hallelujah. Some folks think that revival is all about tongues and moving chair, but some of us need to have some relationship with one another. And just know to talk to one another. Love on somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. Get some of your, the pain of the past uh, out of you. Somebody say aha. Uh -huh. only, only, only the Holy Ghost can do that. Uh, and then the impact and the attack uh, of the Holy Ghost fire can do that for some folk. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. Woo, somebody say yes. Mm, because you got to be free. Somebody say I got to be free. Before you can free somebody else, you got to be free. You got to know to maintain your freedom in fasting and prayer and looking at yourself in God's mirror. Somebody say hallelujah. Because if you are messed up and want to free somebody else, them stuff will the mess and people will jump on you and mess you up some more. Somebody say, uh huh. Somebody say, I'm getting this to the revelation. I can't hear the house up in here. Shut back at me today. I'm hearing you. I'm the, somebody say, Pastor, I'm hearing you. He will revive us. Somebody say, God, I need a revival. And he says, on the third day, not only the second day we're going to get revived, he gives you some more space. And then he says, well, somebody says, some more space. I can't hear the revelation, people. Come on, somebody say, and then and, uh, he's going to bring you what? He's going to give you what? He's going to restore you. Somebody say, thank God for the restoration on the third day. When he restores you everything in your life that was broken down, our economy that was broken down, it will be restored. Somebody say hallelujah. Physical hurts in your body will be restored. There is another dimension that God wants to bring to your life and into this ministry. There's ministry of restoration. Somebody shout restoration. He wants to restore you first. So we can go with the word of restoration to restore the world, your neighborhood, and your co-workers. Somebody say, yes, I receive it. Woo! Somebody say, hallelujah. Somebody say, he will restore. And so, as we move on to slide number two, what, 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 what uh, is it to return to God? Number one, it means to return to our passion for him. Somebody shall say, I need passion for God. But I'm touching your bed and say, God, stir up uh, your passion. I might not know those words, passion, but God, touch your bed, everybody, young ones, small ones, and say, God, stir up your passion on the inside of me. Passion for you again. Passion for your word again. Passion to worship you again. Passion to worship you again. Passion to fast again. Passion to pray again. Passion to evangelize again. Passion to walk and live a holy life, a separated life. Passion to run away from evil. Somebody said, Passion to live closely to God. I cannot hear this passionate church. Somebody shout and say, Passion. 
Somebody touch your belly and say, God, stir a passion on the inside of me. Because God wants his church to be revived. Revival is for us. Restoration is for the people up in God's house. He says, I'm going to restore the tabernacle of David. He wants to restore worship on the inside of us again. Somebody say, restore the power of worship back into our personal lives. Somebody shout and say, God, restore restoration passion uh, passion somebody say passion something is there but no passion somebody said I want passion put your hands out and prophetically grab it uh, in the prophetic grammar say God I'm grabbing passion some of you are doing that thing say God I'm grabbing passion Woo! out of glory somebody say passion somebody say passion to do what you do. Everybody who work in this ministry, serve in this ministry, minister in this ministry, you got to grab passion. As you will just do it out of rote. Do it out of a physical passion. Do it out of just dragging just to show up. Say you're doing it. But somebody say, God. Somebody. Come on, my workers. Quiet. Say, God. I want to hear my workers. And I, I gotta, I'm not hearing you in the spirit. Say, God. Restore the energy of your supernatural passion. Woo, hallelujah. That will change stuff and dimensions. Synchronize and it will syncopate some stuff in your spiritual mindset. Syncopation. Somebody say syncopate. Yeah, yeah, when you're playing, syncopation. Synch synchronize stuff. Do stuff that the pastor can't do. Oh, but it's best anointed stuff. Somebody say, Holy Ghost, do it. Woo, Rebecca Shalom. I feel God up in the house. What is it to return to God? Ah, he started preaching that and the time going. Number two, but no problem. We have next week. He says, what is it to restore to God? To return to him is to come back to that what? First love. Somebody said, I'm returning to my first love. When we look at the, the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, they were a, a fundamental church. They believed the word of God. They were a very good church. They were a Bible-believing church, something like us. A Bible-teaching church. They didn't allow false teaching to come up among us. You remember when we shut down that false teaching guy when he came up among us? Came in the house with flies. He's preaching. I see Beelzebub at work. I say, brother, you closed down. Well, next time, I, I really gave them space to see if he will change. But next time, that bad boy coming off the pulpit. Amen. Oh, you know, 12 years functioning. We had a BLZ about preacher. He gets up and all these flies come in. I could not himself get one note. <clears throat> come mess up our spiritual explosion. I said, not up in here. Paid him his honorarium. Bought him another plane ticket. Closed down his hotel. Bam, out the land. 